Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now this is a video I've been requested time and time again, so I'm finally getting around to actually doing it. And that is to compare the Anywhere X17 2021 model against the previous big boy, the Anywhere Area 51 MR2. This is a fantastic desktop replacement laptop that I reviewed about a year ago. Now I reviewed the 2070 Super version and I loved it so much, I actually ended up buying one for myself, but going for pretty much sort of specced out with a 2080 Super. And the reason for that is, with my use, if you watch the uh, videos on this channel, I'm very often running on a 34 inch ultra wide and now I've moved up to a 38 inch ultra wide. So I always need the most powerful graphics card I can get hold of to push those high pixels on those bigger monitors. Now this laptop I've had for a year and it has served me brilliantly. And I didn't intend on buying a laptop to replace this machine at all, but on reviewing this Anywhere X17 a few months ago, Anyway, totally took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting this laptop to come out, especially so soon after releasing the M17R4. So when we got this one in and I reviewed it, again, I loved this so much, I ended up getting a 3080 version of this for myself too. Now I know this is sort of first world problems, but I can't actually decide which one of these laptops I actually want to own personally. So hopefully by comparing this in this video for you guys, I actually might be able to make the decision for myself too. So just very quickly, I want to talk about specs before we actually get into the actual comparison. These are pretty comparable. The Anywhere Area 51 MR2 has a desktop 10th gen 10700 eight core 16 thread CPU. Now this is a 10th gen and it runs about 4.6 gigahertz across all the cores. And because it's obviously quite a big and fat desktop replacement laptop, it doesn't throttle, it'll run flat out on that CPU. And the 2080 Super I've got with this card also runs at 200 watts which for a laptop is very impressive. Now the X17, this has got an 11th gen 11800H, which again is an eight core 16 thread CPU, but is a laptop processor. Now this CPU actually only runs at 4.2 gigahertz across all the cores, but because the 11th gen has a new architecture, it actually is more efficient per clock cycle. So they're actually pretty similar between these two with regards to the CPU. Now the GPU in this machine is the 3080 as I mentioned, and that is 165 watt TGP. So less wattage than this big boy here from last year, but being a 3080, it's a newer generation. And I expect the GPU performance will be better than this machine, but we're gonna test that not only on these 1080p screens on these machines, and also on a 38 inch ultra wide as well. Before we look around the laptop, I also wanna mention they've both got 32 gigabytes of RAM in here two DIMM slots on each of these, which you can upgrade yourself. The Air 51M has two M.2 Gen 3 slots and a 2.5 inch hard drive bay, which I've populated with an SSD. Whereas the X17, although it's only got two slots for the actual storage, the two M.2s in here are actually Gen 4, and that's gonna be beneficial because it's obviously their faster drives and will come in handy when you move to Windows 11. So these two machines, if we take a look at them side by side, the Air 51M R2, was a desktop replacement. It's a big, heavy, chunky machine. And we can see, looking at them side by side, the Area 51 MR2 is pretty much double the thickness of the X17 at its chunkiest part. Now, obviously, if you're buying a 17 inch gaming laptop, you're probably not gonna be toting it around with you all day, every day. And so therefore, the size and the actual weight of this has never been a problem for me. But if you are looking for something that is a bit more portable, then obviously, you can see straight away the difference inside between these two machines. But being a thick, chunky laptop does give this some actual advantages. This has some really heavy duty, thick fans in this machine, and it will easily cope with the 200 watt GPU and the desktop processor running maxed out without any throttling whatsoever. And it does so without getting too loud or without any whiny fans. So was, this is one of the reasons I actually bought this machine in the first place, just because it actually copes so well with the actual the components in the machine. Now the X17, on the other hand, being slim and light, can't have those chunky fans. So what Anywhere have done for this machine, they've actually put in four fans in here. And that has been great for this machine. And one of the reasons that I was, I had my head turned from the Area 51 MR2, because not only does this cool the components incredibly well in this laptop, but it doesn't get overly loud for gaming laptops. It sort of max out about 50 decibel, which for gaming laptops is quite impressive. But also the temperatures are great and the keyboard does not get hot at all, less so on this machine than even the Area 51 MR2 with its big chunky nature. So both of these machines easily cope with their components. You can see how much thicker the Area 51 is. Now let's take a quick look around each of the chassis. Now the ports situation on both of these machines, I'm gonna to have to give a win 
to the Aero 51 MR2. Being a bigger desktop replacement laptop, that was probably gonna be the case anyway because you've got more space for the ports. But also what I like about the Aero 51 MR2 is the fact that a lot of the useful ports are on the side. On the left side, we've got a Thunderbolt port, a USB 3, a microphone, and a headset jack. And on the right side, we've got another two USB 3s, and we've also got a full-size SD card. On the back, we've got an HDMI 2, a mini display port, an Ethernet port, the Alienware graphics amplifier, which although discontinued, is still very useful if you can get hold of the actual amplifier box, and two power input connectors, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Now on the X17, being a slim and light, on the side, all we've got is pretty much venting, and on the left side, we have a power jack, and on the right side, we have a headset jack. All the other ports are at the rear. Now, this has an advantage of keeping the laptop looking pretty tidy with all the cables coming out of the rear, but as somebody that's plugging things in and out of the laptops all the time, I find this a little bit annoying, because I've got to keep turning my laptop around and actually looking for the ports. Port selection, though, is still good, with a Thunderbolt, a USB 3, an Ethernet jack, a USB-C, an HDMI 2.1, a further USB 3, a mini SD card slot, and a mini display port, which rounds out the ports on both these machines, giving you a good selection. So they are both great with the actual selection of ports they provide. I just prefer the layout of the ports on the Air 51, as I'm always plugging things in and out of the actual laptop. Now, if we're looking at the design of the external chassis, you can see that both of them have the embossed logos on the top of the lid, and the Alienware head that lights up. But if we go to the actual rear grills, the Aero 51 has the old fashioned black rear grill, whereas the X17 has got now got a new sort of light colored, the lunar light colored rear grill, and only black in the rear section. And if we're talking about the RGB of the Tron rings at the back, they are both lit, but the X17 has the new mini LED Tron lights, which is not only much more vibrant, but can host a lot more colors around the Tron ring at any one time. And it does look really nice at the back of the laptop. Whereas the Aero 51 MR2 just has the old fashioned Tron ring with just a, a very plain looking light in comparison. But they both look great when you're actually just looking at the laptops in a room. Let's open them up and look inside. Now looking at the machines on the inside of the actual decks, you can see that obviously the Lunar Light Aero 51 MR2 is Lunar Light throughout the top deck. Whereas the X17, we don't have color choices with the X17s anymore. We just have the dark side deck. Now, in all honesty, I love both. I prefer the look of the Lunar Light deck. I think it looks great and matches well with the chassis, but the actual keys light up better in the dark side. You know, you actually see the sort of the RGB better on the actual backlighting. So swings and roundabouts here. Now, if we look at the touchpad on both of these machines, both of these touchpads light up, but the difference between the two models is the Aero 51 MR2 actually has buttons, whereas the X17 is just a single pad where you can click anywhere on the pad. I love them both, they both work brilliantly, but I do prefer the X17 slightly because it is a, just a slightly bigger surface area when I'm actually using the touchpad. But if I'm honest, I've usually got a mouse, I've so rarely even used the touchpads on these laptops. Moving up to the keyboard, and this is an area where I have to give the Aero 51 MR2 a win here, purely because the layout of this keyboard is better in my opinion. They've both got amazing feeling keys. They're both incredible to type on. It just comes down to the layout. With the Aero 51 MR2, all the secondary symbols are actually lit, whereas the X17, you'll notice that the primary characters are lit, but the secondary functions are not, which is a shame. With the Aero 51 MR2, we have a full size number pad as well as the actual keyboard, and the actual arrow keys are separate from the actual keyboard. Whereas on the X17, they've crammed the actual arrow keys, the cursor keys, into the keyboard. And this causes some issues when you're typing. You'll, sometimes you'll mishit the up cursor instead of the shift key, just because they've crushed it into that area. You do get used to it, but it is a little bit annoying. As we move to the top of the deck, you can see both of these machines have air intakes. These aren't speakers on either of these machines, but we will listen to the speakers and they sound like this. So the speakers are set to 50% on both these laptops and we're going to start with the X17. Area 51. Area 
Now we're going to try the X17 at 80% volume. Air 51. So there we have it. Now the X17 does seem a little bit louder and sharper. It's definitely a lot more tinnier. The Area 51 MR2 has got much fuller sounding speakers and it's definitely a more enjoyable experience listening to music on that laptop. You'll notice on the Area 51 MR2, the power button is in the middle of the laptop and it lights up as they always do on Alienware's. You can see we're on battery at the moment, so it's amber. And the X17, the power button is over on the right. Other than that, everything works the same, so that's all great. As we move up to the screen, you can see here that the Area 51 being so much thicker, the screen comes up quite a lot higher than the X17, just due to the size of this machine. But both of these have a 1080p panel. I've actually got the 360 hertz on the Area 51 MR2, where I've only bought the 165 hertz on this uh, X17. They're both great, if I'm honest. They both look and feel great. They're both responsive. Now with the X17, you can get the 4K 120 hertz version. So if you're using the machine for productivity and you wanna use that laptop, that could be an option for you. But unfortunately, neither of these have a QHD option, which is something that I really think Alienware should have added on their range, and I don't know why they've never done it. Now, above the actual screens themselves, both of these laptops have got Windows Hello, but you're not guaranteed to get it on the Area 51 MR2. Only when you upgrade the screen and you get Toby Eye do you get the Windows Hello. With the X17, every model gets Windows Hello. And on both of these machines, the Windows Hello works absolutely flawlessly, and you get logged in the second you open the screen. I really do love it. Now, as I mentioned, this has got Toby Eye as well, so it actually tracks your head movement and some games will be able to take advantage of that. I've never really used it myself. I just purely use it for the Windows Hello and that's pretty much it. But there must be somebody out there that's using it. So then, looking at the performance on both of these machines, despite running an awful lot higher wattage on the Area 51, on both the CPU and the GPU, the X17 actually comes out quite a bit ahead in a number of the tests. It obviously shows you the generational performance differences. Now when I tested Cinebench R20, we're talking just over a 10% difference. The X17 scored just over 5,000 points. The Air 51 scored just over 4,600 points. Now when you also consider that the Air 51M is actually running at over 150 watts on that CPU, then it's still scoring less than the X17, which is pulling about 80 watts. So it's incredibly efficient in comparison to this older 10th gen desktop chip. Now, when we move over to R23, the differences aren't quite as profound. We're talking about just over 13,000 on the X17 and 12,000 on the Air 51. So realistically, these are quite similar scores, but you just have to bear in mind that obviously this is doing it with a lot less wattage on the X17. Now, when we move to Geekbench 5, this is where you can see another improvement on the 11th gen CPUs. The X17 scores 1,500 as opposed to 1,281 on the Air 51 MR2. So it's a 20% lead in single core performance on the 11th gen CPU on this X17. And that makes the PC feel a lot snappier in day-to-day -day use, that single core score. Also, multi-core scores are a fair bit higher on the X17 as well. And when we move to the actual OpenCL score, we're using the 2080 Super, on the Air 51 and the 3080 on the actual X17, we're getting about 10 to 15% higher on the actual 3080. Running Time Spy on both these machines, you can see a nice improvement here on the actual GPU score on the X17 with 12,600 on the actual X17 as opposed to 10,500 on the Air 51. So this is showing you that you know, the generation improvements on this 3080 is a nice, nice improvement over the 2080 Super. Also note as well that the 2080 Super is using more wattage and still scoring less. Fire Strike as well, we're looking again at a nice performance of uh, 31.5 compared to 27.5. So again, the X17 is taking a nice lead here. And moving on to a few game benchmarks. Again, it's consistently winning on the X17 over the Area 51 MR2. Now we're not talking a vast improvement, we're talking about 12 to 15% on average, but it's doing it at a lot lower wattage on both the GPU and the CPU, which is why we're allowed to get such amazing performance in a slim and light chassis that's actually not much louder 
than this Area 51 MR2, which is double the thickness. Now, both of these machines play amazingly at 1080p, so you, with either of these two here, you'll be able to play any game you like. You might have to dial a few of the settings down a bit on the more, more modern AAA titles, but they will play everything at a nice frame rate. But when we put it up to 1600p on my 38-inch ultrawide, that's when things start to struggle a little bit. And again, the X17 comes in a good 12 to 15% higher than the Air 51 MR2, but you'll notice in these game benchmarks, most of these here are only in the 70 to 80s frames per second, so neither of these are going to set the world alight on this resolution. But games are still playable. So I just want to play a bit of Apex on both of these laptop screens, just so you can get a feel of how they play on the actual laptops themselves. Now first we're using the X17, and I'm just going to check the fan noise. This is on the balance profile, and you can see on the balance profile it's pretty impressive, we're only about 48 decibels. If I put it up to max fans, it's about 50 decibels, so not much worse. Now if we look at the actual heat on the keyboard, on the WASD keys we're looking at about 34 degrees centigrade. As I move across to the middle, 37, and over to the right, it's 33. Now as we move the actual probe to the top of the screen, this is where all the heat is on this machine, and it's a very toasty 53 degrees. Now same again on the Area 51 MR2, it's about 50, just over 50 decibels on the balance profile, but it's a, it's a nice whoosh with these fans, it's not annoying at all. And then on the WASD keys, it gets up to about 38 degrees centigrade. And in the centre, we're looking at 39 degrees centigrade. And as we go over to the right, it's only 33. Now also, when we move up to the top, it only gets up to 40 degrees, so much cooler than the actual X17. This large chassis is very good at getting rid of this excess heat. So now what I'm going to do is play some footage that was captured through this match by NVIDIA Shadowplay. And we're going to put them side by side, so you can kind of see the, the temperatures against each other and also the frames per second on each of these machines. Now obviously I can't get them in exactly the same spot, these are just two matches in Apex, but they are running exactly the same settings and at 1080p. So as you can see these games running side by side, the frames per second, they're both playing pretty well at uh, 1080p, both well over sort of 100 frames per second. Um, it's difficult to judge which is actually better in this game because obviously there are different parts of points in the landscape. But if we look at the temperatures, you can see that the X17 is running cooler than the Air 51 MR2, but also bear in mind it is using a lot less wattage to actually achieve this. The Area 51 MR2 has obviously got a desktop CPU that runs at a lot higher watts, and also the 2080 Super can get up to 200 watts, so you are having to push out a lot more heat on that machine. So then looking at this performance, both of these machines perform incredibly. The X17 obviously takes the lead. You know, this is newer technology, you kind of do expect that. But if you had either of these machines, especially if you're playing on the 1080p display internally, both these are going to be absolutely amazing. But there are other factors that you need to consider. And the first thing is the power supply. Now the 3080 model of the X17 comes with the very large 340 watt power supply. If you get the lower 3060 or 3070 model X17s, you get a really tiny 240 watt power supply. But obviously, this is the top ends here, so we get the big 340 watt brick. The Area 51 MR2, because it is using much higher wattage components, so you're talking a desktop CPU and the 200 watt GPU, you need two power bricks to run this laptop properly. You get the 330 watt power brick, and you also get a 240 watt brick. So you need to carry around two power packs to get the maximum performance out of this machine. Now in my testing, if I'm just running the 330 watt brick, I'm getting about 95% of this machine's power, so if I was out and about with this machine, I probably would only carry the 330 watt power brick, and I'll keep the other two at home under my desk, so when I want the maximum power. So that is something to bear in mind, and also when you're actually picking these machines up, the Air 51 is well over a kilogram heavier than the X17. This is really is quite a behemoth to carry around with you. Now again, because I'm using these machines as a desktop replacement, this doesn't bother me. I've got a nice rucksack that I put it in. I only carry it from like location to location and then dump it on the desk. I wouldn't want to be using this on my lap. It's going to crush your legs. Whereas the X17, it is much more portable. You could quite happily take this easily in a backpack and hardly notice it's on you. And also use it on your lap much easier than you could the Air 51 MR2. And also whilst we're talking about portability and using it on your lap, battery life. The Area 51 MR2, battery life is definitely not a strong suit. This is a desktop replacement with a desktop chip and a 200 watt graphics card. 
the battery just is more like a mobile UPS than it is battery life. If you get two hours out of the Aero 51 MR2, you've done well. It's really not great. And to be fair, in the time that I've used it, I think I've hardly ever used it on battery life. I literally, if it's just moving it from one room to the other. So it is like a mobile UPS to me. Whereas the X17, if you've got the Optimus version, like I have here with the base panel, I get over five hours of battery life if I've got it in an Optimus mode. That is quite good for a 17 inch gaming laptop. There are other laptops, especially the Ryzen laptops that will get you more than that. But for an Alienware, that's probably one of the better uh, battery life that you'll get out of an Alienware laptop. So that brings us to the conclusion then. Having looked around these machines, you can see that these are both obviously Dell Alienware flagship laptops. Both of these are fantastic machines in their own right. But if you're gonna choose one, and for me, choosing one of these has been very difficult. Now, obviously, if it's from a pure performance and portability perspective, obviously the X17 wins hands down, but nothing's ever that simple. The Aero 51 MR2, it's got slightly nicer sounding fans. It's got a better keyboard, in my opinion, with obviously the secondary functions backlit. It's got better speakers. It's got better port locations for me. Although some people may well like all the ports at the back, I personally prefer the ports spread out around the laptop. It's got more drive bays for extra storage, so I can put more storage in here. So it's never as simple as just, this one has more performance, and so that's the one I'm choosing. Another factor you've got to take into consideration is cost. Now, when this was released, it was incredibly expensive, and uh, a lot of people were put off by the price. But Dell have had some incredible sales on the Aero 51 MR2, because I'm assuming it's been discontinued by now. And uh, in the UK, for an example, they had the top end model, like this model here, for I think it was £1,900. And then you could put discount codes on top of that, giving you some incredible value on this laptop. Now, the X17, at the moment, the 3080 is out of stock, so you can't even buy it, which is really frustrating. But I'm hoping they'll come in again soon. And when they do, if you start, you know, souping this model up, you're talking up to like £3,000 in the UK for a, a top spec X17. So the cost has to come into it as well. But if I'm being honest, if I had to go out and just buy one of these laptops today, I think I would have to choose the X17. I think it is the better overall package, for me anyway, personally. As much as I've loved the Air 51 R2, it's just the fact that you're getting more performance in a much slimmer, lighter package that only needs one power brick with Gen 4 SSDs. It just, you know, and also the CPU performance is incredible with this 11th gen CPU. It really does. I mean, it's beating a 10th gen desktop CPU. So I think for most people out there, unless you're getting a really, really good price that you can't pass up on the Aero 51 MR2, I think you're better off picking the X17. And I think, obviously, I'm going to be sticking with this model, and I'm afraid I might have to say goodbye to the Aero 51 MR2. Well, what did you think of these two machines? Which would you pick? Please let me know in the comment sections down below. Let me know your thoughts. And lastly, thank you for watching.